key next uh, skill uh, which we were stressing upon was metrology. In metrology, uh, it's a study of measurements as we talked about. So here, uh, so there are many uh, devices, devices, methods to measure any part. A uh, dimension engineer, right? He decides uh, based on uh, the product characteristics and the feature and the complexity of the product. He decides what is the right kind of uh, measurement gauge to be used to measure these parts. What will be, what should be the sample size and all these aspects. So the most prominent devices I have just highlighted. There are many more, but these are the some of which I come across. So the first one, the most basic, which I think everybody might have seen, or uh, most mechanical engineers, I think they might have come across uh, the feeler gauge. They are like uh, you just uh, uh, just place uh, the feeler gauge between uh, a gap on a flash uh, to know uh, what is the what is the width between that. That's a feeler gauge, and then there are calipers. You might have seen uh, micrometer square gauges. So in the CMM, uh, this is this is quite widely used. CMM stands for coordinate measurement machine. The coordinate, as you know, x y. So it gives like how much. I, I think the CMM is more accurate than uh, pillar gauge calipers or micrometer. So this is the one of the devices which is widely used in automotive aerospace. And then the most uh, modern and expensive ones are the laser trackers. So as we uh, talked about the A and B, right? Pillar gauge, caliper, micrometer gauge, and CMM. These are all uh, contact uh, measurement devices. So a probe uh, in CMM uh, touches the part to know what is the uh, exact measurement in the coordinate system. Uh, whereas laser tracker, uh, CD scanners, uh, they are like non-contact. Uh, they don't touch the part at all. Like uh, they measure, they scan the part. And then they overlay that with the CAD, and they will let you know what are the variation. Uh, so these are a little bit expensive, uh, but uh, they are mostly used in uh, uh, exterior analysis, like uh, uh, when there is a flow, right? There are like a, a flow in the exterior, exterior part of the vehicles, right? So they want to know the surfacial variation. If, uh, if there's a flatness uh, called out like 0.1, then uh, how will you measure it? There's it's a quite uh, accurate measurement you need to measure. So. In such aspects like uh, these laser trackers, 3D scanners, or even CMM, uh, so these aspects, these are the tools which are used for devices. What does a dimensional engineer uh, do here, right? So, so he helps in selection of uh, these gauges. So based on the part which has been uh, which has to be measured, so he helps in deciding what measurement uh, device needs to be used. So one of the aspects which he needs to look at is accuracy of the machine. So there are some parts don't require to be measured in accuracy of microns, right? Some some parts are fine with uh, even with 0.1 mm accuracy, right? So so you do so that that is one of the parameters which dimensional engineers look at while deciding which machine to be used, and then uh, he looks at uh, the budget. He or she looks at budget like uh, what is the company is ready to spend on uh, these tools. And then uh, there are many uh, suppliers uh, who supply these measurement devices, and then uh, the support support from these suppliers like how how good uh, these companies are. You need to know uh, to be well aware of all these companies, uh, their accuracy, their uh, their background. And uh, many of these devices, some are portable, uh, some are you need to have brief idea about them. Uh, like CMM, like uh, huge big CMMs, right? They don't move, move uh, they cannot be moved very easily. Whereas uh, laser trackers are like very portable, you can carry carry them along. You know, uh, they're easy to haul. If you have uh, different manufacturing plants uh, in tandem, right, in different areas, so they can be easily hauled in a in a commercial vehicle. Uh, whereas CMM, it's very hard. It requires a setup. Uh, then you cannot move them. So these are this is one of the aspect. And then uh, companies will have uh, software. Right, this these devices will record the data. And then they will spit out. To analyze and report them, you need software. So there are many companies which design these softwares. So if your company is already having a software, uh, you should look at uh, look at whether the procurement which are the new device which you are procuring uh, is compatible with the software the company is already using. Request training as well, training the uh, the personnel who is using this device. And then um, I think one of the important aspect is also what are you measuring. Uh, the size, complexity, and the training which uh, the technician is already having, the expertise 
uh, the person who is measuring them and the areas uh, of uh, the measurement, whether you are measuring the exterior, interior. So the exterior parts are very easily accessible, right, to the arm to go and um, see the part and measure them. Uh, whereas the interior parts, which are quite intricate, you know, uh, once the car has been or a, or a full product has been built, um, to get into interiors and measure the device uh, parts or features, um, this is quite intricate. So this is one of the aspects you need to take care of as well. And then, uh, so these are, as we're talking about softwares, like uh, these are the most prominent software which, are, which I come across, data collection reporting softwares, so, uh, PCDM, IS, and Verisurf. Yeah, so these are the uh, of the software. So and another uh, add-on uh, skill which you can uh, learn in this uh, sector is uh, uh, gauge R and R studies. That is uh, uh, repeatability and reproducibility. Uh, so whenever you are working uh, in a metrology lab, uh, some of the key jargons we'll listen to here is alignment. Uh, whether you need to align the product, uh, the part on the surface properly before you measure it. Um, and then the next one is calibration. So before you measure uh, the part, you need to calibrate the, uh, the device so that there is no abnormality when you measure it, right? Say if you're measuring uh, a zero coordinate, right, in a coordinate system. So when you measure it with uh, the device, it should show zero. So that's a, that's, a, that's a brief idea of uh, calibration. So these uh, two aspects are also help engage r and as we talked about, uh, it's called repeatability and uh, reproducibility. So this is to make sure uh, whatever you measure, uh, you're measuring the precision and accuracy uh, repeat, repeatedly, again and again the same, so that the product is uh, reproducible. So this, there, is a, there is a science study about this gauge r and this is, this is a required skill in metrology. Uh, this helps. So this is a brief overview of what we do in metrology. Very important uh, skill set which a dimensional engineer can possess. That's a dimensional variation analysis, or simply called DVA. Uh, so this has been used mostly in uh, companies which are uh, cash rich, you know, like uh, who mass produce like automotive, aerospace, uh, electronics. Not in small scale industries. Uh, mostly, it's used in uh, uh, the conglomerates uh, like mass production. Major OEMs, OEMs uh, mostly use uh, these kind of softwares because there is huge uh, human resource investment as well as software uh, uh, investment. So what is this dimensional variation analysis, right? So once uh, a product is uh, crafted, designed, once we have the CAD uh, or once we have the uh, design, right? Design ready in CAD. CAD. So we can uh, virtually build the product in uh, these softwares to see what is and apply the GDNT uh, aspects. So when I say uh, GDNT, uh, uh, when you build a product, you can apply uh, tolerances, dimensions, and then uh, manufacturing sequence uh, into this simulation. So if there are 10 parts going into a product, like you can say like this part goes after this, there's a sequence you can apply, and then there's a tolerance you can apply the dimensions of the features you can apply and then measure uh, the exterior parameters virtually without even going to the build in these softwares. This is of great help uh, to measure the end product before it even goes into manufacturing. And uh, these softwares help in uh, conducting uh, what if studies even before going into prototype. So in design phase, uh, if the design engineer wants to try out, so he, if he says, uh, for example, if he's designing uh, if he has three options for a headlamp design, right? Headlamp, headlamp means uh, the headlight, headlight of any vehicle, right? Uh, he has three designs and he is having a hard time deciding uh, which headlamp he needs to use or the attachment strategy he needs to use for the final production. So you can conduct a what if study. What if I use this, right? You can, you can run three simulations with the three different designs and see what is the most optimum, right? The least uh, cost. I mean, without say, without going to production, you can say this this strategy will work out the best. So, to conducting these studies, right, um, the virtual simulation analysis helps. So, knowing this uh, software, how it works, how to build a product, uh, is quite helpful. Um, and as a, and as as we can uh, know, um, 
how the product builds before going to production we save time and resources right and then uh, as we talked before like uh, we can uh, dimensional engineer needs to do stack up analysis so 3d stack analysis cannot be done on an excel sheet or paper only 1d stack 1d is one dimensional so one dimensional stack ups can be done on a paper but to do 3d analysis like uh, 3d stack analysis uh, in one go you can uh, it can be done on a dimensional variation analysis so you can know uh, the variation which has been caused in x y z all the directions so this is quite helpful and uh, and you can measure at multiple sections along along the build process so you'll know you'll know when you when you do the when you will work on this software like it's it's quite helpful uh, handy you know uh, it saves a lot of time uh, helps you uh, visualize the product better even if you, uh, before uh, it goes to uh, manufacturing uh, so some of the softwares right uh, which are being used uh, currently uh, one of them is uh, 3d cs by dimensional control system uh, i guess this is an american company uh, the next one uh, i think it's vsa virtual simulation analysis uh, this software is by siemens so uh, there are many other softwares uh, many more so these softwares work um, as an add on so you might be wondering uh, i worked on katia ugenx autocad uh, is this a different software altogether uh, uh, no actually it works as an add on add on add on to katia ugenx uh, uh, solid works autocad um, say it's, it's like a plug in you know Uh, you just plug into this CAD and the uh, Katia, all these CAD softwares. Uh, so it works in tandem with them, which they have demonstrated uh, how the build process works and how it spits out data. Uh, so the software they they are demonstrating is 3D CS. Uh, uh, it's from a company called Dimensional Control System. So I guess uh, you got a brief idea of uh, how the simulation has been done, right? So he just demonstrated like a mouse has been. Uh, built virtually so that that mouse is not been manufactured at all i mean he is even before that he is building the process virtually and seeing and varying the part according to the tolerances and seeing uh, how it builds up so the next uh, skill uh, is very which is, should be very helpful is uh, statistical process control statistical process control right uh, once you uh, once you get the data start getting data from uh, the build processes say uh, Uh, you get a data for of fifty uh, build processes of uh, something which has been measured. So you can predict uh, what is the uh, what is the what is the probability of uh, uh, you building hundred parts and uh, how many parts getting out of specification. So say like you build hundred uh, parts and uh, by the data which you got for the ten parts, you can uh, probability you can build a probability that out of hundred parts, ten parts will go out of spec. So So this is this is the this is where uh, SPC statistical process control helps you to analyze data and predict like uh, what will be the end outcome or if you go for mass mass pro manufacturing and then statistical process control also helps you uh, in maintaining accuracy and uh, precision uh, in build processes. So I guess uh, most people have already heard about uh, uh, the Six Sigma quality control uh, uh, process, right? So this is one of the uh, applications uh, uh, which has been used in quality control nowadays uh, so this is uh, a brief data about uh, what what do you mean by that six sigma uh, quality control so six sigma sigma is a standard deviation so at different standard deviation uh, we uh, have a certain defect rate so when uh, when a company says uh, we are manufacturing our product at six sigma so they mean that uh, so dpmo is defects per million opportunities so when a company boasts that uh, it is building all its products at six sigma level it means that every million 1 million is 10 lakhs uh, for a, every 10 lakh products they are manufacturing uh, 3.4 parts are uh, defects so this is a very good uh, this has been considered very good in terms of manufacturing so if our company is manufacturing at 3 sigma so these many parts will be out of spec so how do you uh, make sure that the manufacturing process we are building at which sigma level right so that's when uh, statistical process control helps us so we cannot build a million parts and see uh, how many parts are going out of spec so even by measuring a small sample we can run spc 
and uh, we can know like uh, what how are we building what is the quality at which we are building uh, which parts are out of spec you know you, you don't need to measure the final product uh, all the time you can measure even the parts uh, you measure uh, you receive some uh, 10 parts from a supplier right you are still in a decision making process the supplier a is uh, has provided 10 parts supplier b has provided 10 parts to see which supplier is providing you better parts you can measure those and uh, get analyze the data and know like who is controlling the all these features better and then you can decide uh, if the if the pricing is right and then many other if many other aspects also go um, go in line with what you are expecting um, the, this this uh, skill helps you in deciding uh, uh, which supplier uh, is better and in many other aspects uh, so, so if you look at this picture right so understanding these nomenclature right like, uh, what do you mean by all this standard deviation mean uh, you know six six ppk ppp uh, lsl usl so all these all these parameters are uh, you you learn all these terminologies like uh, what are these terminologies mean because whenever somebody shows you uh, such reports or uh, such data right so we should be uh, a dimensional engineer uh, should be in a position to understand uh, how to uh, what uh, to interpret you know what is the outcome of this data and make decisions based out of it so i'll just give you a run over a brief uh, introduction here what is this so here right so uh, we are uh, we have run like 2000 you know 2000 runs here like uh, if you're measuring 2000 parts right so the nominal uh, measurement nominal variation right so nominal was measurement was at 0 0.03 minus 0 0.03 okay there's a shift and then uh, there's mean a mean was same and then the standard deviation was 0.14 so and then six standard uh, six sigma standard deviation stands at 0.87 so that is like uh, that will be 0.87 and then there is ppk uh, pp ppk lsl is uh, lower spec limit right so this is uh, defined by design engineers so whatever goes up beyond this will be rejected so this is what this means and then l out is uh, lower out percentage uh, h out is higher out percentage total out so th all the parts which we have measured are accepted in this uh, this graph here yeah, this is normal graph uh, normal curve and then uh, we measure 2000 parts and all the 2000 parts have been accepted so this is just a brief idea of uh, how to how to read this and then this is the output of the software 3 dcs software which uh, we're talking about so the software gives you um, so this is we are measuring uh, one parameter okay so if it says like bottom to bottom flush so this is the uh, feature which you are measuring so it's a point to point measurement one to one okay one to one measurement and then uh, what it, what these 10 things are telling is uh, these are the 10 parameters which are affecting uh, the variation in that uh, measurement so this these these two parameters are uh, affecting 35% contributing 35% so so this is the uh, this is a helpful uh, feature which uh, 3D software has. So somebody, if you, if this uh, feature is giving you problems, right? If the, there were like 50% uh, of this measurement were going out of spec. So this software, by running this software, you'll get to know that these were the two top features, uh, which were contributing the most for uh, this uh, measurement to go out of spec. So, so immediately you can go to the production line and look at these features, right? Um, so you already know like the, what are the, parameters or contributors which are affecting this uh, blunder in this in this measurement here so it helps you uh, it gives you a direction to where to look at um, in the build processes so as i said uh, statistical process control helps in uh, six sigma quality projects as well uh, if your company is uh, asking you to work on a six sigma project uh, then the spc is a uh, very helpful tool um, and it's a very helpful tool for dimensional engineering as well and then uh, in many companies are uh, um, uh, using uh, the concept of design of experiments so you, so that's a concept uh, where uh, spc helps a lot and then what are the advancements right uh, what are the advancements in this area so rapid uh, 3d printing for feasibility testing so uh, most of the parts now that have been 3d printed and seen like for the feasibility so that is a new advancement uh, uh, so if a part needs to be uh, stabbed or you know uh, induction, induction molded or anything uh, so even before it goes into manufacturing uh, the companies nowadays they just 3d print it they give it for a print and they just see the feasibility like how 
uh, how how it looks uh, in real, how how the external appearance is, how the tolerances are, how its uh, external appeal is, and then uh, so dimensional engineers nowadays I think uh, this is a new they need to co coordinate with this uh, three D printing and then measure the parts and then uh, decide like you know how uh, what should be the changes to done to the uh, in terms of design GTT. So this is a new development. Uh, earlier, uh, we used to see, uh, we used to, the second point is embedded GDNT in CAD, right? So earlier we used to uh, take a huge drafter, uh, huge sheets of paper, and then uh, draw those engineering drawings, GDNT. Uh, now the mo most, uh, to cut, cut down the development process, uh, many companies, you know, uh, are going totally digital, saying uh, they don't use uh, uh, these 2D drawings, uh, um, as a, as an independent uh, document, they are going for embedded GDNT. So there is a 3D CAD and uh, and there is an on-off toggle called GDNT. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's coming in. Uh, it, I think uh, it's, it's widely used in uh, Katia UG. It's embedded. It's an on-off toggle. Like if you're on the toggle, you'll see all the GDNT within the CAD. You don't need to refer to a second document at all. Uh, so that is the new uh, which has been widely used in machine engineering. And then uh, the third point is finite elemental analysis, FEA, compliant models for simulation of uh, non-rigid parts. Uh, the software which we were talking, which we talked about earlier, uh, is uh, the VSA and the DCS. So in those those softwares, uh, we need to collaborate with the FEA uh, team if the company has, or you yourself need to uh, know how to mesh a product. Uh, meshing is of uh, is, is breaking down uh, the part into FEA model. Uh, and then you can uh, import that uh, FEA mesh, uh, that uh, stiffness matrix, uh, will, it, will, it will spit out our data. So you need to import that into 3D software uh, for parts which are non-rigid. For rigid, non-rigid, uh, what I mean is uh, if you can bend a part uh, with your hand, right? So that's a non-rigid. So, so that will bend, right? How will you GDNT a part which is bending? And how will you do that analysis? So you need that, uh, that the stiffness of the part. So that's when you import FEA. FEA. So that's a new, uh, uh, that's a quite advanced uh, technology which you can use in uh, 3D dimensional relation analysis. And then the fourth one is uh, cloud-based automation and measurement scanning devices. So uh, over the year, uh, over the year, you know, over the air, uh, you can uh, you can send a 3D uh, updated CAD to the measurement device, and uh, without any uh, involvement of any human. The device will measure the the parts and send send the data. So this is a, it, it happens uh, totally via cloud uh, cloud automation, um, which has been used in many manufacturing. Uh, I think it's it's quite uh, capital intensive yet, uh, but I think the direction uh, the industry is moving at is towards that. So they're totally automating even the measurement uh, line. So when a product comes, like a measurement device scans it. Uh, sends out the data if there is anything uh, anything abnormal, it raises a red flag, and the engineer will look at it. So this is totally automated. Uh, and even if there is any update in the design, CAD, you know, parameter or specification, you can update it over the year. I mean, uh, you don't need to be there present physically to update the design. So these are the uh, advancements in this. Uh, then finally, like uh, once we learn all these things, like uh, who should uh, try to gain more information uh, skills uh, in this direction. So this will be helpful for uh, most of the people who are involved in design, manufacturing, uh, quality control, in, in, uh, in be it in any any sector. If so, you are design. If you are involved in design, uh, designing in products, manufacturing, uh, quality control. Uh, I think these are all the skills which will help you uh, progress in your uh, field. And it's it's a, it's a Good to have skill for anybody involved in manufacturing, uh, product development life cycle. Because uh, if any engine, engineer in any different department team, uh, he uh, sends out a document which is related to all these aspects which you talked about, uh, you should be in a position to interpret what it means. Promote yourself from layman to a point where you can understand uh, what all these aspects mean. When I say manufacturing uh, uh, product development life cycle, if you are a supply quality engineer, you know. Or procure, procurement engineer, or uh, even if you are in a craftsmanship, um, yeah, or understanding all these aspects uh, really helps. It's a, it's an add-on skill. And uh, so, how do you validate uh, 
that you know all the skills is uh, getting a certification so then there might be many private certifications uh, some of the very well accepted globally uh, certificates are from ASME that is American Society of Mechanical Engineers so I just uh, did a web search and uh, and I myself uh, have looked at GDTP technologies so these are the two certifications which ASME provides so first one is GDTP technologies and the second one is senior so anybody I think the exams uh, are taken throughout the year uh, you it's, it's online uh, so the, these are the costs which have been uh, uh, mentioned uh, on their websites. Uh, if anybody interested, uh, yeah, they can uh, delve into all these uh, skill sets in this field. That's uh, that's gonna be really helpful. And this, I think, this is this is quite, quite essential, uh, quintessential uh, skill to have anybody in manufacturing production. So this is not a skill which will become obsolete over the time. This will always. Uh, uh, I don't know. The positions might transit, transit. You know, like. Uh, the, Dimensional engineer might collaborate with mechanical manufacturing engineer. Only manufacturing engineer might uh, be required to do all the skills, you know, all the all the tasks. Uh, but the skill sets, the the positions might change, but the skill sets will, uh, I think, will remain in in my for uh, in my foresight, you know, like foreseeable future.